Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The largest rocket booster ever built passes first test. Iranian national puts one over on the FAA. And a Forbes columnist says Pilot's Bill of Rights 2 could decrease safety. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. The legendary Saturn V rocket booster that took our astronauts to the moon no longer holds the record as our most powerful rocket lift system. The largest rocket booster ever built successfully fired up last week for a major milestone ground test in preparation to propel NASA's space launch system, referred to as the SLS rocket, and Orion spacecraft to deep space destinations. The booster fired for two minutes, the same amount of time it will fire when it lifts the SLS off the launch pad, and it produced about 3.6 million pounds of thrust. The test is one of two tests planned to qualify the booster for flight. The first flight test of SLS will be configured for a 77-ton lift capacity and carry an uncrewed Orion spacecraft beyond low Earth orbit to test the performance of the integrated system. The SLS will later be configured to provide an unprecedented lift capability of 143 tons to enable missions farther into our solar system. An Iranian national was sentenced in federal court Monday to 27 months in federal prison for stealing the identity of an airline pilot and defrauding the FAA. Nader Ali Sabori Hagagi was convicted of identity theft. He had stolen the identity of a pilot and then duped the FAA into issuing him an ATP certificate and a flight instructor certificate. In a plea agreement, Hagigi admitted to four counts of identity theft before he was sentenced. It's reported the light sentence was due in part to a lack of evidence that he had intended to commit an act of terror. This brings into focus what appears to be a serious lacking on the part of the FAA to verify who they are certificating for pilot privileges. We can only hope that some action will be taken to close the loopholes that allowed this to happen. In the meantime, this guy will be back on the streets in less than three years. After the break, not everyone likes the Pilot's Bill of Rights, too. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare www.aviationmodificationleaders.com The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to bendixking.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, send an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Forbes columnist John Goglia who writes in a recent issue that the Pilot's Bill of Rights 2 could adversely affect air safety. He cites specifically the provisions limiting the FAA's ability to request documents from entities under investigation and a change in the appeals process involving suspension of airmen privileges, which would allow them to be made in federal and district courts rather than solely before the NTSB. Goglia says that not only would that be more time-consuming and costly to the taxpayers, but it could remove the NTSB and its expertise in aviation from the process. Goglia seems to be making the point that withholding due process and constitutional rights from someone charged with a federal violation makes it easier for the government and saves money. He may be right, but a concept like this should scare all Americans. 
Each week, we share with you an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Arrow Video of the Week. Final lift off the practicing with it, practicing both flying it, the parameters under which it can be flown safely. As discussions continue about the proper way to operate a quadcopter, Adam Savage has put out a video to show you the way he does it. This guy has some top-notch ideas, and it's a fun video to watch. Search Adam Savage's quadcopter gear on YouTube. After these messages, Secret Service is on the job with UAVs. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument, TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we summarize some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Secret Service has been conducting flights with a variety of UAVs during early morning hours around Washington, D.C. These flights are to help in devising some kind of defense against the small aircraft. The Commercial Space Flight Federation has added two new executive members and one associate member to its roster of companies. The new members are Midland International Air and Spaceport, Worldview Enterprises, and associate member Planet Labs. A Boeing official says that the company is optimistic about extending the Hornet and Growler aircraft production after the program's sunset date in 2017. Difficult U.S. budget environment has the plane maker looking overseas for continued production of these airplanes. Tickets for the two U.S. stops of the Red Bull Air Race World Championship season are now on sale. The races will be held in Fort Worth on September 26th and 27th, and in Las Vegas on October 17th and 18th. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. Earlier this month, an RQ-4 Global Hawk embarked on an Operation Inherent Resolve mission that sent the aircraft soaring past the 10,000 flying hour milestone. This RQ-4 Global Hawk aircraft, referred to as A-2019, arrived on the line in October of 2010, and it's the first Global Hawk to reach the 10,000 hour flying milestone. During its service, the aircraft has been providing support to warfighters by relaying communications between people and aircraft, as well as enabling airstrikes. This aircraft also holds an endurance record set at 31.5 flying hours. The Operation Inherent Resolve mission helps coalition leaders gain better insight about the security situation on the ground and strengthen the ability of Iraqi and Kurdish ground forces and their international partners to effectively counter ISIL. Well, that's our program for Monday, March 16th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.